have a sexual I relationship with someone in the car? Should I ask? <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, birthday. Have the best and the most wonderful and yay birthday. Meg? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday, Zach. That's Happy birthday, birthday, camera. <laughs> Thank you. Please forward my, my thoughts to your friend Zach. Ah! Happy birthday, Zach. Happy birthday. Cool party. Nice sangry. <laughs> What'd you say? Happy birthday! You can't say happy birthday to Zach? Oh, I already gave him a big hug and a kiss and a lick on the cheek. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Zach! Happy birthday to you! You know that guy! Why are you too late? Ago. That was like February. Yeah, wow. yeah, my bad. <laughs> He's like, I just showed up and performed at your fucking birthday party. You can't remember my shit. Um, but yeah, give it up for Casey one more time, everybody. He, he's actually he's playing a full set at um, Gilman on October 18th. That's next Friday. So uh, come check that shit out. And it's gonna be it's gonna be raw. It's at this like conscious hip hop night thing that they have, and uh, he gonna be there laying it down. Um, before I get up here, I would like to have my friend Molly come up and oh, do a little set. There's no intermission or anything. They just go. No, we're just we're just going. We're just getting into it. We're just we're just going. If you want to, we're just going. Yeah, I'm coming. This, this is my friend Molly. Uh, I was in a hip hop group for a few years, and this was a while ago. And we always used to come to the open mics that she would host and put together. 
and uh, you know we would open up for her and everything. And uh, after that hip hop group split up, I was kind of like I I wasn't in a band yet. I had no idea what the fuck to do, and I was like I was like well. I've been wanting to do comedy for like a really long time and Molly's always giving me pointers on shit just like whenever she can and everything when I would talk to her about like hey what you know how do I get into it what should I do and so essentially she's the one that kind of got me like really getting into it and just like giving me like the cojones to come up and just like fucking Aww. talk so give it up for Molly Sokum uh, who is awesome and just like a great comedian. Sweetest intro ever! <laughs> oh, that made me want to cry. You guys are performing in a living room tonight. Hey! Woo! That's what's happening tonight. And that's bullshit because I hooked you up, man, and this is how he repays me performing in his fucking living room. Happy birthday, asshole. Jesus Christ. You know? I really don't care if I suck tonight, you guys. That's how bad. Like, I came back from vacation. Like, I went on a three week vacation to, to New Zealand. What's up, people? Yeah. I'm a comedian and I have money to go to New Zealand for three weeks. That is. That's, that's unheard of. It's amazing. Nothing can go wrong. Like, I am relaxed. I was like, ooh, hanging out with sheep, you know, for three weeks. There's like more sheep than people out there, you guys. It's good, it's good. And I went with a tour group, okay? I went with a tour group. I went by myself to go uh, and hang out with a tour of 18 to 35 year olds. <laughs> okay? Except the majority was 21 to 24 year olds. So I was like one of the old people. But you know what I learned? I can hang. I can hang like crazy. I was living my college years in three weeks. I never had my college years. I just lived it in three weeks. That's like my whole, like my lifetime. I just, just did everything. I jumped off of bridges like on purpose. I went white water rafting. I, I rolled down a hill in a hamster ball. That's what I did. It was amazing. And I think everybody should do it. You know what I didn't like uh, with, with being like the old person in the group? I like the old peers. Oh my God, just kind of going to the clubs. Because, you know, 18-year-olds can drink out there. Hello. <laughs> this guy could just go to the club and be like, yeah, let's go. What's going on? <laughs> Buying women drinks and stuff? How weird is that? And that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> so, I had a young man. Very cute. He's very cute. He's got like a Swedish accent, you know, because, you know, everybody's from... Just tourists meeting up in one place to just get it on is pretty much what's happening. And this guy starts dancing with me and I'm like, yeah, this is good. He's so cute. He's got the Bieber haircut thing happening and I should have known because he had a Bieber haircut. That is just like the sign right there. And first I just looked at his face and I was like, oh my God, he's a baby face, right? And I just did like the like the old woman thing, like I, I said with hands on my hips and I said, how old are you? Like the most, like an old lady would say, like how old are you? And he said, oh, 20. And I was like, oh, no. Mm, mm. And I was just like, oh my God, no way, no. That is just, just oh. And the thing is that he didn't know how old he was, like how old I was, you know, he would have, no idea, like I blend in, look at him, I'm like four feet tall, it's like amazing, I, they wouldn't know. But what if he did find out I was 32, you know? He was like ready to like take me out to whatever, his camper van, whatever these backpackers do, you know? Take me out and everything, and what if he just ends up telling my friends, you know, he finds out how old I am, I'm like, yeah, I did it with a lady. Yeah, 32 year old lady. I don't want to be that lady. Everybody in my tour group was like, oh, why don't you, you know, go and hang out with that guy? Because I don't need to add that notch on my belt. Like, seriously, do I need to add like a 20 year old experience to my list? Do I need that? That's just going to ruin my trip right there, right? Oh, it was horrible. Exactly. All right, you guys, so um, I am Asian, uh, specifically Cambodian, but believe Woo! it or not, well, okay, I, 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 sure. We're like, yeah, Cambodians <laughs> up in Alameda. Yes, that's true. I'm Cambodian, but believe it or not, people actually mistaken me for being Latina. 
I don't know, especially with this Asian perm going on, right? Like, I got this by choice. Like, I made this happen to my hair. And, okay, so recently, I, like, I had a woman come up to me, and she just, she just started speaking Spanish. And I don't know why I did this, but, like, I gave her back the weirdest response ever. You know? I said to her, Oh, no. <laughs> I don't speak the Spanish. <laughs> like, the more st like the most stereotypical Asian accent. I'm sorry, I'm looking at you, hon. Oh, I'm so sorry. But, like, this horrible. Like, I couldn't just tell her, I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't speak any Spanish. I had to go, oh, no. I go make egg roll. No, <laughs> stupid. Very racist of me. What about me? I like shopping off the uh, infomercials. Anybody else like shopping off the infomercials? I love it. Come on, admit it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I know that. Yeah, I love it. Like the first thing I ever bought from an infomercial was this bakeware set. It was great. Because you can like pop muffins out of it easily. You didn't need any spray. It was awesome. One problem. I don't bake. <laughs> I was just baked when I bought it. <laughs> yeah, does anybody else get stoned and order shitty cooking supplies off the TV? Woo! And then pretend you're gonna cook. <laughs> yeah. And then you wake up in the morning with the whole raw chicken in the microwave marinating the sriracha. <laughs> anybody else? It's not good. You know what kills a high? Salmonella. That's <laughs> not good. So, um, I really enjoy uh, bachelor parties. I love bachelor parties. Any other ladies? They don't care. No, they don't. Carmen, it's never been to one. You won one, and you don't care, and you don't remember it, do you? It's very little. I love bachelor parties. I'm gonna describe my, this was like two years ago. I went with uh, 10 girls, 10 girls. Half of them in fully committed relationships. Half of them married with kids. <laughs> and I was the only single one out of that whole group. Yeah, so guess who was the crazy one? The married with kids, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because you know, they've been out of the game for a little bit, haven't they? <laughs> you know, even at the dance club on the night, on the, you're like, on the floor, it's like releasing them back into the wild, you know? <laughs> They're doing moves I haven't seen in 15 years, like the Tootsie Roll, and it's like, I'm like, whoa, simmer down, mamas, for real, simmer down. And you know it's gonna be a crazy weekend to you when your girlfriend says to you, Molly, if I get in a fight tonight, you got my back, right? <laughs> no. No. How about if I just punch you in the face and get it over with, seriously? <laughs> and what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? The size of Dora Explorer. I can't. <laughs> just, just biting everybody's ankles? <laughs> That's all I can do. God, and us ladies, we love. We love strippers. And I, and I like male strippers. I think they're fun. I think they're fun. But, hey, you do too. Yeah. <laughs> but I have the type of girlfriends that like to make friends. You know, they want to converse with our stripper. Find out where he's from, where he goes to school. <laughs> you know, these guys are really nice guys. You know, they're like, oh, I'm from here. I go to school there. I'm like, no. Dude, I didn't pay you to make friends. <laughs> I paid you to degrade yourself. <laughs> so quit talking and teabag my face. <laughs> this is where it gets really raunchy. But this is really all I want right here. Just this. Just. 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 <laughs> That's it. Right there. It's disgusting. All right. Thank you guys very much. I have fun. Thank you, Zach. Happy birthday. up for my like my fucking co-worker my managers are here right now but they're also my friends yeah that's what kind of job we work at we work at a job where nobody gives a shit about the job they work at it's like one of the best places to be oh my god just the whole thing oh thank you thank you so much thank you guys for coming uh so i'm i'm 25 
and turn 25. Yeah. My, um, my, my brother, I remember when my brother, my brother's five years older, he called me up when he turned 25 and he was like, yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's totally different, you know? It's totally, you just wake up and you think about all the stuff in your life and you're just like, you know, I woke up and I was like, what am I having for breakfast today? Cause it better be fucking tight. Like that's, that's, that was my thought process, you know? Um, but you know, what he said did have some merit. You, you do go through like a lot of like realizations and shit when you become 25. Um, I've reached a lot of closure when it comes to a lot of things. Like I was thinking about past relationships and everything, like ex-girlfriends and stuff and like, I was in a lot of bad. I was in a lot of bad relationships before I got with my uh, fiance Angie, right here. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, and uh, you know, I was just thinking about those, and I was like, so you know, so what? She would hit on the waiters when we would go to restaurants together. So what? She did take a whole bunch of money from me, like a lot of money. <laughs> So what? She might have given me some diseases here and there every once in a while, you know. But, you know, when you, when you come down to it, she's not like, or they're not a bad, now we know we're talking about somebody specific. <laughs> but, Don't forget the computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was such a good computer. Anyway. Oh, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, you think about those things and you're like, you know what? We had our bad times, but she's not a bad person. Like... Like, that's, that's a sense of closure that I reached was, my ex-girlfriend isn't a bad person. I'm just a way better one. <laughs> like, just such a better person than her. So, you know, that's, that's something you realize along the way. Another thing, it's, it's really weird, a, a sense of uh, cynicism comes with just being older and like pessimism and you're just like, you're, you know, at first you think it's bad, but then you realize, here's when I thought it was bad. Here's when I thought it was bad. I was, um, uh, I'd say a few months ago, and when I say a few months, I probably mean like two years ago, because that's how my mind works. Um, I was with my homeboy MJ, who's, who's here tonight, and we're in Walgreens, and we see this, we see this picture, or this, uh, this t-shirt with Martin Luther King on it. And I don't know why, but my first response was like, ugh. Like, ugh, fucking Martin Luther King. Ugh. Like, like, what next? Am I gonna be like, ugh, fucking Gandhi, what did that guy ever do? Like, and I don't think it had anything to do with Martin Luther King. I just think it had to do with the bombardment that I was raised with of Martin Luther King being an awesome person, because he was, but like, is just like played out for me, I guess. So I was just like, fuck this guy, you know, like, <laughs> which, which is terrible. But like, you know, when, when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, well, what if I, you know, what if I was like, not in the racist sense, but what if I was serious, what if I seriously for some reason didn't like Martin Luther King? Like, what if, what if that was the case? And um, I just started thinking back to like, a bunch of friends that I have, like, well, not friends, more like those acquaintances that you see, like, once every couple of years, and they're always really fucking nice to you. They're always like, hey, man, what's up? I heard that album that you put out, and, and it was fucking great. And I'm like, nobody's heard that album. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, no, I actually listened to it. And then it like, start, like, singing a part from it. And for some reason, you're just like, fuck that guy. In, in this case, we'll, we'll say his name is Jim. And I'm like, fuck Jim. Just like every, every chance. And it's just like, you don't know why. You just hate him. You hear about all these good things that he's doing too. Like, oh yeah, Jim just donated like $3,000 to like, you know, some fundraiser for uh, cancer benefits and stuff. And you're just like, what a fucking prick. <laughs> that dude, who does he think he is, you know? Um, <laughs> It has been a weird past couple of days being 25, though. Um, not in the sense that I'm like 25 and I gotta get my shit together or anything, but in the sense that um, just a lot of weird things have been happening. Like I went to this concert last night um, with uh, with Angie and my friend uh, Morgan uh, over there, and it was uh, it was weird. It was for this band, Michael Franti and Spearhead, 
And at first, it started off. It started off like we had this party van, and we were drinking, we were smoking. It was all good. And um, we go into the concert, and it's just like it's fun. It's filled with energy and like all this positive message, this reggae, rap, rock stuff, and it's just it's badass, you know. Um, and then just, certain things started getting really weird. I was like, whoa, what is going on here? There was this dude that I saw earlier uh, in line that looked just like Mickey Rourke. <laughs> and um, I saw him in the concert, but he was in the general admission area. He was, in, he was on the floor level, and he had his shirt off. And uh, Michael Franti was singing to him about how, like, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been going to Baghdad and doing all these great things for humanity. And, and this dude was, like, crying with his shirt off. And I was like, I was like, he must be a veteran. That's why. Whose fucking phone is that? No, I'm kidding. Um, I was like, he must be a veteran, you know? Like, he must, he must have gone through it. So what Michael Franti is saying must be... That's you, dear. That's your phone. That's the fuck. Good, good job, guys. Good job with the laughing. Some good laughing here. Hey, turn that shit off, man. Nice right how, do you, how, do you, how do you even do it? You, you probably press a button. It's, it's Apple. You press a button. Oh, it just keeps going, too. What an asshole. <laughs> Can I hit snooze or will it just come back? J O K. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, so, anyway, where was I? Uh, dude, Mickey Rourke. Okay, so Mickey Rourke is crying, and he's being sung to by Michael Franti. And uh, at first I'm like, okay, he must be a veteran. Like, he must have gone through it. So the things Michael Franti's singing about, then, like, really hitting him, you know? And then he starts, like, feeling himself. And he's just, he's going, he's going off, and he starts hugging Michael Franti. And um, it's just, like, a weird thing. And I was like, okay, that's that's a that's a little weird, you know. Whatever, I'll I'll you know I'll cast that aside. I won't think about it too much. And uh, and then later on in the concert, it, the concert just kept getting progressively weird. I remember the end, the boiling point for for Morgan and I here, uh, where we just couldn't contain laughter was um, at one point towards the end of the concert. Michael Franti goes, "Hey y'all, I'm gonna need some kids up here." And then fucking kids appear, like like fifty of them, like, and I have no idea where they came from. Like, did he have kids just hiding in the back that he was keeping or something? Like, does he take the same kids on tour? Like, it was just, it was weird. And then and then they proceed to jump to this song and sing it with them, and it turns into this whole kids bop thing. And the cameras made sense to me now. I was like, were they actually just filming a kids bop commercial and they didn't fucking tell any of us? And I remember turning to Morgan and and we just started crying because I turned to Morgan and I'm like, there needs to be a big fucking animal on the stage right now. There needs to be a guy just like in this really cheap uh, animal costume just like waddling around and just like, you know, he doesn't really, that guy never fits with the kids. He's never like, he's never like dancing with the kids. He's always just like, he doesn't know where he is. And occasionally he kicks one of them because he, he doesn't know where to go. You know, so that, that was a weird occasion. Um, Another one was today. I was today I was passing out flyers for 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 uh, for work, and uh, it yeah. Well, th this was this was uh, anyway. I was, I was passing out flyers with my uh, friend Michael, and uh, my boss was like, "Hey, uh, I'll pay for you guys breakfast. Uh, I know you're off the clock, but I'll pay for your breakfast if you." go and pass out flyers, and I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do anything for food, it's, it's very terrible. That's one thing that I've started to learn how to do as a 25 year old, is say no, because before you hit 25, you don't know how to do that. The word no, you have no idea what it means, you know, and then when you wake up as a 25 year old, you're like, I know what no means. It means no. <laughs> No means no, people. Just letting you know that. Anyway. Um, now what? <laughs> so, so we're trying to give out these flyers. And, you know, everybody in Alameda or just anywhere where you're trying to give out flyers and you say the words free, nobody fucking pays attention, I guess. And uh, we're like, hey, free juice, free blah, 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 blah. And it's the same when I do, like, uh, benefit shows. I'm like, hey, help save children with cancer. And they're just like, I'm, I'm sorry, fuck kids. 
You know, like, they just, they just don't care. Um, and so I pass by all these people in Alameda, and I'm like, hey, free Jews, free Jews, free Jews. And everybody's like, no, no, sorry, no, sorry. And one guy, this older guy in a suit, he just, he just, he just walks past, and I'm like, hey, sir, free juice, and he goes, hey, do you? And he doesn't, he doesn't say, there's no explanation, I was just like, and I could not stop laughing, I was just like, does he respond? With that to everybody passing him a flyer, he's just like, I'll just use the old hoodly <laughs> So that was a, uh, that was an experience. I know now for any situation that I'm in that I don't want to be in, I'm just going to walk away and be like, hoodly <laughs> hoo. And I don't, I don't know when this happened. I don't know when selling DVDs became the new drug. I don't know like when our marijuana got replaced with fucking bootleg DVDs. I don't know when that happened, but it did. And, uh, you know, he comes up to me, he's like, you need movies? And I'm just like, yeah, what you got, man? And so he takes me, he takes me some alleyway. We, we open up this, this car trunk and he's got everything. And he's like, and this is like, this is like four or five years ago. And he's like, uh, he's like, yo, I got Dark Knight. I got this and that. I got blah, 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 blah. I got Ghost Dad. I got this. And then I was like, I was like, wait, hold up. <laughs> Hold on, you need to go back real quick. What was that? What was that other one? He's like, uh, yeah, oh yeah, Ghost Dad. That's just that's just in there. I'm like, give me Ghost Dad. I'm gonna take Ghost Dad. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> so that got me on a Bill Cosby kick for a little while, as it should. And uh, I was watching Fat Albert uh, recently. Yeah. And uh, anybody else here grow up with Fat Albert? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, come, come on, we got a bunch of like 30 year olds here. I know a lot of you grew up with Fat Albert, like, you know. <laughs> hey, ah! I guess we're not doing that. Oh yeah, Molly said we're not doing that anymore. Hey guys. Um, so I grew up with Fat Albert and, um, you know, I was watching it recently and I was like, wait a second, because they talk about some deep shit in Fat Albert. It's not like, it's not like, hey, 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 guys, let's go play in the park, you know? No, it's like Fat Albert gets real, and when it gets real, it gets real. It's like, it's. I saw this episode that was like, hey, 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 guys, Stacy has a case of chlamydia, so let's help her find a clinic and help her out. And I was just like, did I just? What, did he just say chlamydia? And then he's like, yes, I did. Chlamydia is a sexually transmitted disease. And I was like, thank you, Fat Albert. And uh, he goes, he, he, like, and the next episode was, was even more trippy because there's this guy named, like, Jeff or something that comes around and, like, they would hang out with him, but they always wondered why he acted so weird. And apparently Jeff was a heroin addict. And uh, he's like, hey, Jeff is addicted to heroin so let's help him find a clinic and help him out and like i'm just like it's not like oh jeff smokes a little weed every now and then no it's like he, he does fucking heroin and i'm just like i'm like wait a second and i'm thinking about it and my parents were good parents shout out to my parents but but I don't remember, I don't remember the talk. I don't remember my mom sitting me down and being like, hey, you need to wear condoms, this and that. Like, I just remember watching Fat Albert as a kid. So I was like, is Fat Albert really the reason I know to stay safe? Like, you know? Hey, 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 Zach, make sure you stay safe because I was doo 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 I love, I love doing a, a Fat Albert impression because it's this close to Louis Armstrong. Like, they're, they're kind of, you know, Louis Armstrong is just a little bit lower and a little bit grimier, actually, surprisingly. Anyway, um, I don't know where that was going, but I, was, I just did it, you know. Um, I had a lot of defining moments as a, uh, as a child, uh, along, you know, of course, Fat Albert being there at all times. Just kind of checking him. Hey Zach, how's it going? And I'm just like, I'm doing good, Fat Albert. I'm staying safe. And he's like, that's good, man. Um, and he disappears. And you know, you hear that one kid that's like, Fat Albert, you couldn't find a chicken in a chicken coop. And he's like, Fuck you, man. I'm just trying to help people out. Why you always got a hand on me? Um, <laughs> but like, you know, I've I've done the dating thing before, and it's just it's awful. It's terrible. 
and it doesn't work for me because I fluctuate between uh, thinking I look awful to thinking I look amazing. And every time I would have a date before we were together, it was always the thinking I look awful day. And, uh, you know, you just think about what you're going to say and you think about all this bullshit that may or may not be true. And, you know, for me, it was like, well, I'm this old. I do voice acting sometimes. I do good impressions. Like, that's not going to get you in bed. If anybody's ever said, hey, being a stand-up comedian and impressionist is going to get you laid, fuck those people. Because those people have no idea. Like, I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I come up to a girl and I'm like, hey, I'm an impressionist. And she's like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I do a really good Seth Rogen. And she'll be like, really do it for me. And I'll be like, hey, man, we should fucking, like, kick it sometime. Like, that would be fucking awesome, you know? And she's not gonna, she's not gonna hear that and go, oh my god, that, oh my god, you need to do that in bed, and like that's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. I'm, I'm never gonna be with a girl, and sorry, parents, I'm never gonna be with a girl, and you know, doing the do and having her be like, do your Seth Rogen impression now, and I'll be like, yeah, this is fucking awesome, man. Yeah, you fucking like that, don't you? Like that's never, ever gonna happen. When Tracy Morgan is just a no. Like, it's never, it's ne just, just never gonna be like, hey baby, you know, you like it this way? Like, that's not gonna happen either. There's, you know, so I have a bunch of impressions of really ugly people. So, uh, so that, that gets me nowhere with dates. Like, anyway, Angie got me uh, Bridge School Benefit tickets, and I, I went to the Bridge School Benefit in 2007 last, where, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Neil Young and uh, Tom Waits were playing, and um, you know, uh, Neil Young's another one of those people. Neil Young, we'll say it, Neil Young is just like Jim. He does amazing things for everybody all the time. The Bridge School Benefit is for a great cause, but I just fucking hate him. Like, I can't stand Neil Young. Like, I don't know why. Like, like he's, he's overall a great dude, but I'm just like, fuck you, Neil Young, you know? <laughs> and I saw Jerry Lee Lewis perform at that one, and it was kind of weird because, because Jerry Lee Lewis, he's, he's great and everything, but he can't, nowadays he can't move any part of his body but his fingers. And he's like, he's just like, he's rocking out though, like his whole body is this. And then his fingers are just, and I remember at one point he gave a wink and everybody started going crazy, like all the girls went crazy. And he goes... <laughs> and everybody's like, oh my god, oh my god, Jerry Lewis! And uh, like I said, uh, another person who was performing there was uh, Tom Waits with the Kronos Quartet. And uh, if you can't tell, just that's, that's just where I get me from, is that guy. Everybody knows this. Like, I get people sending me like messages and comments all the time on like Facebook and shit and they go, hey, I saw this new Tom Waits video. I thought you should see it. Like I'm the first person that people think of when they see something Tom Waits related, which may be a good thing and it may also be a bad thing and he may sue me at some point because he wins every fucking lawsuit he engages. Um, but I just think like every single song would uh would be better as tom waits you know do like do like uh just any shitty song that's out now like you do like bruno mars or something and like you'd be like when i see your face there's not a thing that i would change you know and um i just think it would be like 10 times better or anything that i say would be better as tom waits like it would just be like you know, I'm talking about going grocery shopping, and I'd just be like, I'd do it as a list, and I'd be like, yeah, I got some, uh, I got some Cheetos, I got some, uh, some mac and cheese mix, because you need that when you, you know, when you live with me, and uh, I got some, uh, I got some booze, I got, you know, just, it all, it all sounds epic, it all sounds, like, really cool. Um, that's where that was going, I guess. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of, like, older stuff, I'm a big fan of, like, Dean Martin and shit, because Dean Martin was just fucking swaggerific. Dean Martin was so cool. He was just like, he, he's another one who could say anything like, 
Like, if you listen to some of his lyrics now, you're like, that is blatantly sexist and god-awful. Like, girl is like a racehorse, I play her to win. And you're just like, did he just... Did he just say he plays women to win? That's... And uh, comparing them to racehorses? That's... I'd say that's a little sexist. Or, um, you know, have you ever heard the song Standing on the Corner watching all the girls go by? It's really creepy. Like, when you think about Standing on the corner... Oh, there's, there's, uh, there's one line in there that really just creeps me out. Uh, he goes, I haven't got a girl but I can wish, so I take me down to Main Street. That's where I select my imaginary dish. And I'm just like, wow. I feel like you just raped my ears, Dean Martin. You are a creepy fucker. Um, <laughs> it's like, make sure you stay safe when you stand around the corner watching the girls go by. Anyway, um, so I was watching some old movies and uh, I was watching Elvis, because Elvis is, you know, he's badass, he's Elvis. Um, and like, I know that a lot of people don't watch Elvis movies because they're good. <laughs> they just watch them because fucking Elvis is in it. Like, that's, that's the bottom line. And even though Elvis' acting is terrible, there's still those scenes where he sings, and that's the point, that's the reason for watching the movie. And I started noticing like a trend with Elvis movies. Like, there's this trend where he's like, he's like a fisherman or he's some like everyday worker or something and he's just like, yeah man, I need, uh, I need to get some money to, to do, uh, get my fishing career up, you know? I gotta get my boat working again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he'll be at his friend's club talking about this or something and his friend will come up on the mic and he'll be like, hey, let's, let's announce my friend Jack or something and, and he'll come up and he'll do a song and it'll be like, well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready now, go cat, go, and everybody will just be going crazy, they'll be all about it, and then he might slow it down, and he might be like, yeah, so uh, I'm going to do this song now, and it'll be like, wise men say, only fools rush in, and all the girls are going crazy, everybody's just going crazy, everybody loves it, and then he'll come up off stage, and I'll sit back down and I'll be like, God damn, man. If only I could find a way to make me some goddamn money. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the things that uh, make a waiter hate you. Number one, walking in the door. <laughs> Number two, being a customer. Number three, asking questions. And number four, just existing as a human being in the restaurant. It's just all a bad combination. And, uh, you know, I think one of, one of the reasons, one of the things that makes it worse is Yelp. Because, like, everybody uses Yelp now. Like, they might as well be using Yelp to review movies and shit. But, like, the thing is, for me, if somebody tells me a movie's really shitty, chances are I'm still going to be stupid enough to see it. Like, a whole bunch of people went, oh, you're gonna see Wolverine? Well, it's a really bad movie. And I was like, fuck it, I'll see it. And then I came out of the theater, I was like, yeah, that's a bad movie. Um, actually, I couldn't contain myself from laughter at that movie either. I was just like, I was busting up the whole time. I was high as shit too, so it was like amazing. It was amazing for all the wrong reasons. But, um, so, you know, I just, I feel like Yelp is this thing that, that people, people like take into account more than like actual people's opinions and people are like people are like yeah well i just did this yelp review and you know how the person writes you're like this person can't write for shit why should i listen to them and you know a lot of people I, it's just weird to me that like people sit and stew like if you don't have a smartphone which everybody does but if you don't have a smartphone you have to take the time to be upset about your restaurant experience till when you get home and then you write some shit out that you probably thought of a lot like you you thought of what you were going to say and it's one of, it's it's one of those things where i'm just like picturing the scenario and i'm just like how does that work like like tom and martha perfect white couple they go and and they go do their thing and they go to this restaurant and they don't like the service and you know just the whole time tom is just like <laughs> That fucking restaurant. That fucking 
those waiters. Yeah, fuck those waiters. And then Martha's like, honey, calm down. It wasn't that bad. No, no. This is America. This is America. And it was that fucking bad. And then like, you know, he's just, he's going off and then he's typing his thing on, on Yelp. And then she's like, she's like, Tom, Tom, could you, could you please come to bed? We, we haven't snuggled in three years. He's like, no, those waiters need to fucking die. And then she's like, we, we used to make love. That's the, that's the scenario I'm picturing. This is just, just me though. <laughs> okay, uh, another thing I was, uh, I was on Facebook recently, meeting probably like an hour ago. Because uh, that's really just like, that's, that's what we do in life. We do things for our Facebook, or we do them for our Tumblr, or our Snapchat or something. Ramon's, Ramon's probably Snapchatting right now. <laughs> and no, and I feel it, because I know right after this is done, I'm probably going to disappear from the party for a while, and I'm going to be like, thank you all for coming to the party, and I'm going to tag every one of you, even though you're right fucking here, and I can just say thank you right now. Um, but yeah, the reason, the reason we do everything is for Facebook or Tumblr or something online. And, you know, the reason we make food now is so we can put it on our... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take so many pictures of that mac and cheese, like, you don't even know. And, um... Or selfies. I still do the MySpace every once in a while. My uncle does it constantly wherever he is. And it works. I'm just gonna say it works. Anyway. Um, but I was noticing everybody does everything for like online online websites and everything, and it's it's a really trippy thing. I was I was on Facebook earlier, and I passed by all these like really depressing posts, you know, like help this person with cancer, this and that, and I I'm just like kind of a piece of shit because a lot of the time I'm just like ah, I don't need to pay attention to that, like fuck that. And, you know, I'm not like my mom who does... My mom, give it up for my mom real quick for not only having us here. But my mom does, like, all this humanitarian shit. Like, she does, like, everything, like, you can do to be a good person in society. And, you know, a lot of the time she'll invite me to, like, do needle pickups or homeless handouts. And I'll be thinking, I'll be like, uh, yeah, no, mom, I actually, I can't make it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with Joey today. She's like, oh, you and Joey have plans? I'm like, no, no, we haven't actually planned anything out. I just, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good today. I don't feel like it. So, so I see all these, all these posts of like, help this person, help this person. And I'm, I'm just like, uh, I, I already did a benefit show a couple of months. I don't need to help anybody else, you know. I walk past people I know that are actually homeless. And I just, I'm just like, oh, yeah, whatever, there's... You know, he's, he's supposed to be there, whatever. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm still a better person than uh, most of my exes. It's weird. <laughs> and I just noticed how I said I'm still a better person than most of my exes because I've, I've been trying to experiment lately with the English language, and when you remove articles, just things are so much better. <laughs> like, like... Just, just any sentence you could think of, like, you know, let's, let's get a hot dog. Instead, let's get hot dog. And it just, it just sounds way better. Anyway, so I'm looking at all these posts, and, um, you know, they're all really depressing. Like, this was a day where everybody was, you know, donating to this and this and that. And I see this one that's from one of my friends, and I felt really bad, but I didn't know what to do because it said... Oh my god, my grandma just died. I don't know how I'm gonna go on. She was my rock. And I didn't know whether to comment and say some shit like, Oh, I have a dead grandma too. Hit me up because every girl that you respond to thinks you're hitting on them nowadays. Or um, I also didn't know whether to like the post or not because I saw 50 fucking likes on this post. So in my head, even though like a lot of people are like, are like, yeah, no, you like the post to show your support and everything. In my head, there's somebody, there's somebody that saw that post. Oh my God, my grandma just died. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without her and she's my rock. And somebody went, nice. <laughs> just like, just like, why would liking that be a good idea? Nice. Just like, this person was just murdered in my family. Nice, <laughs> sweet, <laughs> like.
Uh, recently, I, I've been finding out that um, they've been doing this thing where, uh, in like really prestigious schools, where they have iPod, iPads instead of books, and uh, they're wondering why the education level is like dropping and the grade levels are dropping, and they're like, why are all these kids, why are all these kids on Facebook and, and Tumblr all day? You know, we got them iPads. They shouldn't be on this. And it's like, probably because you got them iPads instead of books. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why don't you shut off, why don't you shut off the internet capabilities on the iPads? And they're like, well, no, that's where they get their books from. I wish there was a way we can solve this. I don't know. Maybe fucking books. That might help. Having books might be better than iPads. I'm just, I'm just saying, that's... Let's see ideal world that I live in. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I hate it when, uh, when girls, uh, or just anybody, it could be guys too, talk about a new relationship without me asking or giving a shit. And I'm just like, hey man, how have you been? And they're like, I've been, I've been or like with a girl or something. I'm like, hey, how have you been? What's up? And she's just like, I've been awesome. I've been with my super awesome boyfriend. He's so super, he's so awesome, and he's so boyfriend. And I'm just like, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't ask about your boyfriend. Like, I didn't ask if you were in a relationship. I don't really know where that came from. And did you just use boyfriend as a, a, something to describe somebody? It's like, he's so boyfriend. And he, he writes music, and the music is so boyfriend, too. It's like the most boyfriendest music I've ever heard. And, um... I just, I'm just like, dude, nobody gives a shit. I'm sorry, it's just nobody gives a shit about you and your shitty boyfriend. Why is he super, why is he awesome, and why is he boyfriend? Well, number one, he doesn't hit me. Uh, number two, he cooks spaghetti. He has made spaghetti. I'm like, meanwhile, I've been sitting here making fucking beignets from scratch and like homemade bechamel sauce for my awesome mac and cheese that's in the kitchen. And I could have just poured some pre-made sauce onto some fucking noodles. Are you see? Anyway, uh, I also hate it when people use the phrase two birds with one stone. I do it too, so it's not, it's not something that I'm not guilty of. But like, I just, I feel like it's kind of vicious because you're like, Let's kill two living creatures with one fucking, like, big rock thing. And we're gonna murder these creatures, but we're gonna do it at the same time. Like, that sounds fun. We should do that. Two birds, one stone. And uh, I thought, we might as well just take it to a whole nother level. And if we're gonna be vicious, let's be vicious. Why not just be like, oh yeah, no, we could do that. We could go to the store. And oh my god, they have chicken there too. So we could kill two puppies with one brick. Um, this is a, another thing that uh, I can't stand is, uh, just imagine it though. Hold on, it, it gets funnier if you imagine it because it's terribly disturbing. Just, just a brick and, and two puppies and just And you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just makes it so much better, the visual, the visual here. Um, another thing is when uh, a lot of Filipino relatives of mine are very proud to have Spaniard blood. They're like, oh yes, we have the blood of Spaniards. And I'm like, I'm like, that wasn't like, that wasn't like a conscious effort. Like the Spaniards weren't like, hey, we should mate with the Filipinos and we should get together because like, I think the genes would meld well. No, no, the Spaniards came, they raped the shit out of the Filipinos and that's, you know, that's how we have Spanish blood. It's not, like, it's not like a lovely thing that was thought up. It's just like, it's a terrible thing that nobody should be proud of. I don't know any girls in the world that have been raped and been like, hey, bro, were you raped too? Yes, I was awesome! You know, it's just, it's, um, it's a terrible thing. Anyway, um, another thing, this is my, I think this might be my last one, guys. Maybe, I might have two more. Um, another thing was, I heard about, uh, like when Harry Potter was big, you can tell this is an old joke, because Harry Potter was still like relevant, aside from online stuff about Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter was still like coming out and shit, and people were waiting in line for it. Um, but they were having book burnings for Harry Potter, yeah. And I was just like, 
because, you know, the right wing, say, believe books are evil, I guess, which probably explains why a lot of right wing, sorry if we have any right wing Christians in here, but if you're in here, why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, Fuck you, man. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but we have like, we have the the right wing Christians have book burnings, and they think books are the evil thing, which explains why a lot of them are really fucking stupid because they don't know how to read. I'm like they're burning all their reading material. Like they're burning anything that can make them a little more intelligent or open up their mind in some way, and it makes me wonder. How do they remember the Bible? How do they see the Bible and they go, they go, well, I can't burn that because that book is good. You know, like, how has it not become where they're accidentally burning Bibles at this point? <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, Billy, hey, Billy, what's this one say? I don't, I don't know. Is it to to he to he buble to he buble? I don't know, that shit sounds African. Throw it in the goddamn fire. Or is that gay singer guy that likes to cover old songs? Um, <laughs> that's another one, man. That's another one. I just, I fucking, he's done like one song that I like, but I fucking hate Michael Bublé. I don't know why. He's got a good voice, and every cover that he does is very accurate, but I'm just like, fuck you, man. You're such a prick. I think it's the way he dresses, honestly. He's got the... He's got the like after like fucking five o'clock shadow with leather jackets, and that's just always a douchebag combo. Um, <laughs> has anybody come up to you and been like, "What's your elevator pitch for a film?" Like if you have a film idea, right? And there's this there's a scenario where you're in an elevator and you have 30 seconds or something with a producer, and you have to reel them in with that 30 seconds, you know. And uh, I was thinking something that I had an idea for, and um, it would go a little something like like this: you would have you would have the narrator, and he would go, don't time me because this isn't going to be thirty seconds for fucking sure. Because fuck that guy in the elevator. If it takes him thirty seconds to be like, oh yeah, I'll give you a million dollars for that, he's probably Michael Bay. Anyway, um, so. Uh, Jerry! Gabby! This is more coworkers and friends. They're awesome. I'm gonna talk about them right now. Gabby's cool. She's 17. She's a freak. And Jerry is 21 now, and he's also cool and looks kind of like Rod Serling and just has a perfect beard. He just has a perfect beard. Anyway, um, so my elevator pitch idea for a film went something like. He had an idea that went too far. A film starring Seth Rogen. Man, you know what would be awesome? We should be fucking black guys. Like, we should paint our faces black and then we should wear chains and we could say the word nigga and get away with it, man. That would be awesome. <sighs> Jay Brugal. I don't know, man. I think this is a really bad idea. You probably shouldn't do this one. <laughs> with Tracy Morgan. Hey, I heard these dudes was dressing up as black dudes, but they ain't really black, though. <laughs> and the return of your long-awaited DMX. <laughs> Yo, if they come around here and the ass ain't black, Ain't nobody getting out alive! <laughs> A film so bad it had to be directed by Brett Ratner. <laughs> Checkerboard. <laughs> Thank you guys, have a good night. Thank you, you guys are awesome. And you really made my birthday just fucking amazing.